8.5 is similar objects, scale models, and scale diagrams. So now we're dealing with 3D objects instead of 2D objects. So our goal is to understand and use scale models and scale diagrams that involve 3D objects. So I'm going to give you the summary first, just like I did last time, so that we have somewhere to base our knowledge from. So key ideas. Two 3D objects that are similar have dimensions that are proportional. Just like two two-dimensional objects that are similar have dimensions that are proportional. The scale factor is the ratio of a linear measurement of an object to the corresponding linear measurement of a similar object. So we're not dealing with volume, we're just dealing with like the length of a side of the 3D object. Um, to create a scale model or diagram, determine an appropriate scale to use based on the dimensions of the original object and the size of the model or diagram that is being required. So make sure that your scale diagram can fit on your sheet of paper. <laughs> What we need to know is that you can multiply any linear measurement of an object by the scale factor to calculate the corresponding object of the similar, the corresponding measurement of the similar object. So it's just like using 2D shapes, only now we're just doing using 3D shapes. So just like for 2D shapes, k is equal to the linear me measurement over the corresponding linear measurement. So scale model over actual object. When a scale factor is between 0 and 1, the new object is a reduction, and when the scale factor is greater than 1, the new object is an enlargement, just like when we're dealing with 2D shapes. So now let's look at how this can actually be applied. So, example 1, determine if two objects are similar. So Sandeep is a chef. In his restaurant, he uses frying pans of various sizes. Are his frying pans similar? Now because I can't give you guys actual physical frying pans to measure, I'm going to give you the measurement. So the bottom diameter of the large pan is 30 centimeters, of the small pan it's 20 centimeters. The depth of the large pan is 6 centimeters, and the depth of the small pan is 4 centimeters. The handle is 24 centimeters on the large pan, and on the small pan it's 16 centimeters. So I'm going to always be comparing my large pan to my small pan, in that order. So the bottom diameter of my large pan is 30 centimeters, the bottom diameter of the small pan is 20 centimeters. So I have 30 over 20, which can reduce to a scale factor of 3 over 2. So now let's look at the depth. So the depth of my large pan is 6 centimeters, and the depth of my small pan is 4 centimeters. So 6 centimeters over 4 centimeters equals 3 over 2. So now let's look at the handle length. So of my large pan, it's 24 centimeters long, and of my small pan, it's 16 centimeters long, which also reduces to 3 over 2. Because all of our um, dimensions are in proportion, we know that the two pans are similar objects by a scale factor of 3 over 2, or you can write it as a decimal as a scale factor of 1.5. In example 2, we're going to determine the actual dimensions of an object from a scale model. So Esmeralda bought this toy tractor to give to her younger brother for his birthday. The dimensions of the toy are given in the diagram. The scale ratio on the package is 1 to 16. She knows that her brother will want to know the size of the real tractor. How can she determine the dimensions of the real tractor? So it says our scale ratio is 1 to 16. But really, our scale diagram here, or our model, is much smaller than our actual tractor is. So the scale factor for the enlargement is going to be 16 to 1, or 16 over. Therefore, we need to multiply each of the dimensions on the model by 16. We need to multiply our height, our width, and our length by 16. So our actual height, then, will be 16, or k, times 12.7 centimeters, which works out to 203.2 centimeters. Our actual width will be 16 times 9.5 centimeters, which works out to be 152 centimeters wide. And our actual length is 16 times 19.1 centimeters, which is 305.6 centimeters. So the actual height of the tractor is about 2 meters by about 1.5 meters by about 3 meters long. So in our final example, we're going to be actually drawing a scale diagram of a 3D object. Celine is an engineer. She's working on a city project replacing old storm sewer pipes with new concrete pipes. Each pipe has an inner diameter of 1.5 meters, a, a wall thickness of 
1.18 meters and a length of 2.5 meters. How can she create a scale drawing of one of these pipes? So Celine's solution was that if she were to draw the entire pipe as she sees it, it involves perspective, which means that if you look at something far away, or if you imagine railroad tracks, they seem to go in kind of like an arrow shape towards the horizon instead of saying, staying uniformly the same width. So this will distort the actual measurements. So using a side view and a front view of the pipe will enable her to use proportional measurements. So if we see here, we have the side view, which is a rectangle. Do you agree that the side view of a cylinder is a rectangle? Just hold your pencil up and then cut it off so that it's exactly like a cylinder with your hands. If you look at it, it is actually a rectangle. And then the front view, of course, of a cylinder is a circle. So this makes sense. So now we need to figure out how to make our 2.5 meter long pipe fit nicely onto our paper. We need to figure out what scale factor we can use. So to do this, we take the ratio of the paper width to the actual length of the pipe, which in this case our paper width is 21 and a half centimeters or 215 millimeters long to our actual pipe, which is 2500 millimeters long. Remember, our units both have to be the same. So the ideal scale, scale ratio then, by reducing this approximately, is about 1 to 12. So now let's do the same thing with our paper length, which is 280 millimeters to, the, to 2 times the actual diameter of the pipe. So why do we want to go with 2 times the actual diameter of the pipe? It's just so that it fits nicely in the middle of our paper. So we have 280 millimeters to 3500 millimeters. How did we get 3500 millimeters? We took 1.5 meters, changed it into 1500 millimeters, and then multiplied it by 2. So the ideal scale ratio for the length of the paper then is also about 1 to 12. But because I know that multiplying things by 12 or dividing them by 12 is going to give me really weird numbers, I'm going to use 1 to 20. So then using my scale factor of 1 to 20, because I know I want to reduce it so that it fits onto my paper, my scale diagram pipe length is going to be 2.5 meters times 1 over 20, which works out to 0.125 meters. The inner diameter of my scale diagram is going to be 1.5 meters times 1 over 20, which works out to 0.075 meters. My diagram wall thickness is going to be 0.18 meters times 1 over 20, which equals 0 0.009 meters. Converting all of these to millimeters, because I want to be able to draw it with my ruler, I'm going, it's going to work out that the scale diagram pipe length will be 125 millimeters, the inner diameter will be 75 millimeters, and my wall thickness will be 9 millimeters. So now if you remembered, I wanted to have a side view and a front view. So I'm going to organize this a little better so that I have all of my measurements I need right directly where my diagram is going to be. So my length then for my side view is going to be 125 millimeters, and my width is going to be it's going to be my inner diameter of 75 millimeters plus 2 times my wall thicknesses to give me my whole diameter so it's going to be 75 plus 9 plus 9 which equals to 93 millimeters and for my front view my inner diameter is 75 millimeters and my outer diameter or the diameter of this whole big circle is going to be 93 millimeters so now let's actually draw our scale diagram. So I know that my length is 125 millimeters, or 12.5 centimeters, so I'm going to draw that first. And I also know that my width is going to be 93 millimeters, so let's draw that second. Next I'm going to close my rectangle. Now I'm going to label this as my side view, and label my dimensions. So this being done, let's move on to the front view. So I know that my inner diameter for my front view is 75 millimeters. So using my compass, I'm going to... Well, first let's figure out what the radius is going to be, because that'll make it a lot easier for using the compass. So 75 millimeters divided by 2 works out to be 37.5 millimeters. So let's use our compass to draw a circle with a radius of 37.5 millimeters. Now that that's done, I know that my outer diameter, the diameter of my outer circle altogether, is 93 millimeters. So the, ra the radius then, 
would be 93 millimeters divided by 2, which is um, 46.5 millimeters. So now let's draw that circle with my radius of 46.5 millimeters. Okay, this is what the front view of my pipe is going to look like. Now I just need to label it as the front view and label my dimensions. Now that that's done, all that's left is to make sure that I include my scale factor in the corner, which was 1 to 20. 